Before we begin, we'd just like to acknowledge and pay respects to the traditional owners, the Yongu people here today. Um, would like to thank you for having us on your country and where we hope to learn from you and other communities gathered here today from across Australia to build on our knowledge and share this with our community when we return. My name is Cyril Ashby. I'm a young Camillory woman from northwest New South Wales, a small community called Walgett. And I'm proud to be living and working in Water um, with these amazing women and amazing people in their journey to build a strong community. So this is Julie Tardum and this is Casmira Fortune. Sorry, we're doing a bit of a PowerPoint. I think you can all see it, yeah? Okay, great. We all hear the word reform and responsibility without sometimes thinking or knowing what it exactly means and how it applies to different circumstances and people. In the case of what air, reform and responsibility must not only be about individuals, sorry, just lost my point there, must not only be about individuals, but it must be about the way that service providers and government do things. Our presentation today is the beginning of what we hope is an opportunity for what air to define their own identity, which to date has been defined by media. Water is located 320 kilometres southwest of Darwin and is surrounded by 20 rural outstations. The size and age composition of the region is estimated to be close to 3,000 people, with just over half of this number aged less than 18 years of age. For five months of the year, Water is only accessible by plane and is situated on the land of the Kadu Yak Dimanan people. There are currently 22 clan groups living in the community of Wadair. In the late 1990s, the people of Wadair and its surrounds became, began to develop an approach to regional governance. This is known today as the Tamaruf and is, foundation, and is founded on traditional principles of engagement, resolution, reconciliation and cooperation. This concept underpins incorporated bodies such as the Tamaru Regional Tamaru Development Corporation, TDC, which is focused on achieving economic development outcomes. And the Tamaru Regional Authority Aboriginal Corporation, which is focused, which its platform is social advancement and enhancement. Through these bodies, the Tamaru approach enables the 22 groups to reach decisions for the good of the general community. I personally work for TRAC and under the Strong Communities for Children project. In terms of today's presentation, um, under the heading of initiative and development, I'd like to share um, the beginning of what we see as taking initiative in our community, and that's the Stronger Communities for Children project which has been rolled out in five communities in the Northern Territory so far. I'm the coordinator on the, of the project and we're working with the community to set up our own governance arrangements as well. But in doing so, we want to do that in respect of what is existing. And I think that's a message that needs to be taken from here today. So Stronger Communities for Children is funded over the next five years under the Stronger Futures Family Wellbeing Package. And I'd like to commend the government on their long-term commitment for community development, as it's not just five years, but then goes into 10 years. So it really gives communities an opportunity to start something and see it through, not just two or three funding agreements. Stronger Communities for Children in Water is taking the initiative to ensure that we build on existing knowledge and work of those who have committed so much time to helping people move forward in Water people such as Bill Ivory and Professor John Taylor and the work of Dominic McCormick and Tobias Namby. So far, a number of opportunities have been identified to build on, which also call for reform in the way things are currently being done. A 
An example of this is youth diversion. In 2003, Ward Air had the highest rate of juvenile detainees in the Northern Territory. The current interaction with the criminal justice system poses major consequences for the successful and prolonged social and economic participation. There is currently no operational youth diversion program in Ward Air. We know there are successful youth diversion programs out there, but government needs to be ready to invest in this and our young people need to be given a chance at a life. <coughs> service delivery. An example I'm going to use today is the mental health and wellbeing of the community. So far what's done is it's handed out as a top-down approach where service providers fly in from Darwin, from Sydney, and there could be up to three um, mental first aid programs being run at the same time, mostly service providers. And what the saddest thing is, is that the community doesn't know who's flying in, the community doesn't know who's delivering what. So what needs to happen is that these people need to sit down with the community and talk to them about what are the issues around suicide. Each community is different. What is done down south may be different to what communities are experiencing, for example, in Water. Services need to move to a model from a grassroots approach that is driven by a community and must respect the local leadership of the community. The next example is social capital and inclusion. We are taking the initiative to focus on building up the social fabric of the community in order for long-term programs to achieve outcomes. There is a dire need to, prog to progress opportunities for the community to come together, to celebrate culture, to build community connectedness, motivation and self-esteem. Currently, there are no community events run on a regular basis providing a social means to come together and have positive experiences and relationships. This includes no sporting events that we might be used to in our own communities, taking kids there on a Saturday and playing soccer. So at the moment, there's absolutely none of this happening. What we're doing is beginning to build that and we've started up an outdoor cinema night which brings the community together. It's quite a, um, the community is very divisional. So we're trying to bring people together for kids to have fun, to share stories from um, around Australia, Indigenous peoples from everywhere and all over the world. And it's about community being able to, to see past a lot of the negative things that they've had to um, put up with and to maybe be happy and enjoy. Okay. I've got to work the computer as well, sorry. <laughs> the next slide is about redefining identity. What area is a community that has been heavily politicised and reported on in the media? This has resulted in the stereotyping of a whole community. Our Voices is the beginning of a project that is aimed at community having the opportunity to define their own identity by sharing their own stories. Redefining identity is also about taking ownership and control over one's future. We hope that this is a theme that carries out along the Strong Communities for Children timeline. Coming towards the end, I think that there's some basic key messages that need to be learnt by service providers and government. And these are the implementation of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People and also basic human rights. Aboriginal people shouldn't have to gravel at politicians' feet to ask for a good education or a house for the family that's currently there's 20 people living in or being able to have access to a television. Genuine engagement and participation of local people in decision making processes ensuring informed consent. This is also about the governance of organisations and how they run. Take the time to work with boards to tell them and make sure that they're informed on what they're signing, on what the direction that they want to achieve. For too long, 
in my own community, and also I'm starting to see up here, Aboriginal people feel that they're very disconnected from that process. And maybe these meetings need to be held in language, not just English, so that they understand. Accountability of services to community, which must include effective evaluation frameworks. The presentation yesterday about empowered communities was fantastic. And I thought their point on the communities being able to have the say in where funding goes and if a service isn't working property, properly, they should have the power to move that funding to somewhere else that is going to get the outcomes. At the moment, we don't really know what has worked in what area or what is working because we don't have the evalu evaluation frameworks in place. So what we want to do in our program is ensure from the very start that we have this and we're accountable to the community. Addressing institutionalised racism. Coming from Walga in New South Wales, I've experienced some very harsh racism towards my family. But coming up here, I feel that sometimes people feel it's okay for the occasional comment, you know, and it's become an us and a them um, mindset. And sometimes I sit back in meetings and being an Aboriginal person, people think I'm a white fella because I'm not, you know, darker skinned. So I hear and I understand why people may not want to go to the clinic. So addressing these things is means that service providers and people coming into communities need to be honest with themselves. Respect and support for the local leadership and governance systems. So TRAC is in charge of um, the leadership enhancement and social way of life for whatever. TRAC doesn't know who's coming into their community. You know, politicians will rock up and they come to a meeting. You know, services come in and run a program without even talking to them about their, what they're doing and the community has become disengaged in that process. So we have a lot of work to do to get people now engaged and wanting to be part of it. So I think people are just a bit sick of things happening without their okay. Unfortunately, our board, some of our board members weren't able to be here today, so they've asked me to come here and present. But I do have some messages um, that they wanted me to deliver. The first is from our chair, today is Datinga. Our young people need support from both worlds to be able to become strong leaders that can walk in both worlds. Our community is losing too many of our young people to suicide. We have to work together to make them strong. Government and services need to sit down with us, support us to learn from other communities and build from community up. A message from Leon Melpi, who is also a track director and TDC director. It is not just about what air. There are other communities outside the main town that want to have the chance to build economic opportunities as well. A message from Tobias Nambi, who is also a director of track and TDC. Governments need to take responsibility to work with people on a grassroots level. Instead of putting money into more prisons, support community to take control and work with their own people. Government has taken responsibility away from the old man, saying, he's not boss, I am boss sitting in Darwin. Respect our governance systems. The young people don't go to the old man anymore. The police are the boss, the government are the boss. This is not a community anymore, it is a place. Thank you.